Hi there, you are watching Indie Nuggets and today we are learning how to add God of War style drop loots to our game. These items are spawned when the enemy dies and kind of bobs around for a while and then automatically flies back to the player. And it's not that complicated to do. So here's the idea. When the enemy dies, instantiate a drop loot object at enemy's position and let it animate for a while and when the animation ends, we will raise an event to let this thing know that it's time to fly back to the player. So I'll start again with Unity's survival shooter sample project and last time we added this floating health text on enemies so if you'd like to know how we did that please watch the last episode. Let's first create a sphere that will be our loot object and let's also add a new material called drop loot material. I'll add a nice additive shader to this uh, to add a glow around it. Drop this material on our sphere and maybe change the color. Next, let's create an empty game object which will act as a container to this sphere and we will put all our animations on this parent game object. Call it drop loot and adjust the position of this. Now add an animator component to this object and create a new animation clip. And just like we did in the last episode, we will record some new keyframes and we will move the sphere slightly up and then back again. And this will look like it's bobbing. So play around with this and make it as smooth as you want. After this, let's add a new script component to our loot game object and call it follow. This script will allow us to follow the player and fly back to it. In this script, create a public reference to the transform called target. And in the update, we can change this object's position and move it towards the target. Notice that I'm using smooth damp rather than the usual lerp because I think it feels much better. This method takes a velocity variable, so just create a variable for a zero velocity. And for the last variable, which is time, we will use delta time with some modifier, which I'll define as a variable. And this velocity needs to be passed as a reference to remove this error. And maybe instead of having one modifier variable, let's have two and then we will randomize between them. So I'll create like min modifier and max modifier variables and just randomize between them. But now we have a problem. This update method will start moving towards the target the moment the script is loaded, but we only want to start moving once the animation is complete. So let's add a check called is following and we only move if the is following is set to true and define it above. Now we can create a public method like start following that we can call from outside, which will start the follow. Let's go back to the animation for this game object. And this is important. Just after the last frame finishes, I will add a new animation event and then choose our start follow method. Unity will call this method when the animation finishes. So for testing, let's drop our player as a target and hit play. Now you can see that the item first animates and then moves to the player. But there's also a collider on the sphere, which is pushing our player. So let's make the collider a trigger. And you can also see that the animation keeps on looping, which we don't want. So make sure that the animation is set to not loop. Now we can see that it doesn't loop and it doesn't collide, but it's kind of stuck in the ground. And that's because our player's transforms vertical axis actually starts from zero. So to fix this issue, let's create a new tracker game object inside the player and position it somewhere around the player's head. And we will use this as a target instead rather than the player. Now the sphere doesn't sink in the ground anymore. Let's implement the destroy logic now. Now because the sphere already has a sphere collider on it, we can reuse that to detect collision with player and then just destroy the parent container. In our sphere object, add a new script component called destroy parent. Here in our on trigger enter method, we can just check if we entered the player object. And if we did, then just destroy the parent game object, which is basically the loot item in our case. It works now, our loot item is destroyed properly. And the base code is complete now, so we can drag it down to create a prefab out of this and then go to our trigger script. In my case, this is the enemy health script and go down where the enemy dies. Now I will instantiate a prefab at the enemy position with no rotation here. I'll add this public variable for the drop loot prefab. I think creating just one drop would be boring, so let's create many loot items and I'll use the starting health count for the amount of loot items. We also need to set a target for this game object. So get the follow component on this object and set the target to the tracker thing that we made. To do that, let's first add a new tag to this drop loot tracker. And in my enemy health script, I'll keep a reference to this tracker object and find the object with this tracker tag in the start method. Then I can set this tracker's transform as our target. And, and I'm also thinking maybe randomize the drop position a bit to keep things interesting. 
Here I'll just hard code some randomness in the object position. Now I'll drop this prefab on all our enemies and you can see that when the enemy dies, the loot is dropped and flies back to the player. I'll now just play around with this a bit and make it look better. Let's also make three copies of this and each one will get each enemy's color. So I'll just drag the enemies in the scene to pick their color and then set each prefab's material color the same as the enemy. Uh, maybe organize them a bit, rename them properly and assign each enemy their corresponding drops. We can see now that each enemy gets matching color drops. But this is not enough. Let's add some trail render to our drop item. I'll experiment with different values and see what fits best. So this is where I'll stop. You can spend more time on it, polishing it, making it look just perfect. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.